If you love creating but find you're getting bored with the same old things, you want to see these eight ideas for mixed media materials you may never have thought of using. With an open mind and some imagination, I'll bet you can find at least a dozen different things like these right in your home right now. Hey there, Sandy here. Welcome to another creative video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. The first item on my list of things you may not have thought of using with your mixed media is feathers. Believe it or not, you can add these directly to polymer clay and bake at 275 and they will be perfectly fine. These four feathers just came out of a 275 degree Fahrenheit oven. They were in there for 30 minutes. Can you tell the difference between these ones? No, neither can I. You can collect feathers on walks. We have chickens, so this feather came right from my backyard. Or you can buy them in bags from the craft store. Feathers can be used in so many ways, as additions to sculpture, like as the tail feathers in this adorable Goonie Bird by Elaine Langell, or included in jewelry, such as these earrings and this amazing necklace by Debbie Crothers. You can add them in by embedding in polymer clay with some liquid clay, or you can wrap them with wire, leather, or glue into jewelry findings. Wouldn't it be fun to add feathers to your next dragon sculpture or creature of any kind? Number two is so useful. Have you ever come across a project you wanted to make in a specific size and shape but couldn't find the right form to create it? Air dried clay will solve that problem for you. It's less expensive than polymer, but just as easy to sculpt. Once dry, it has a beautiful matte finish, so it won't leave shiny spots on your pieces. I created this form for this long oval shape because I wanted to accommodate this stencil I designed. By making your own custom draping forms, your pieces will not only exactly suit the vision you have, but be completely unique. And you can use them over and over again. Number three is fun, but kind of messy, sand. It has texture, gives a specific feel, and can also evoke memories. This bottle of sand was gathered on a trip to the beach with a friend. And when I make something with it, I'll remember that time spent with her. This tin is entirely covered with real sand, glued in place with liquid clay. But it doesn't just have to be a beach theme. You could evoke the desert. Add succulents, put it in a garden, create a pathway. While we're thinking about the beach, consider beach finds. Things like rocks and shells. Interesting shells can make a fascinating base for sculpting. This crab shell was found on that same beach pit trip with my friend. Not sure what I'm going to do with it, but it'll turn into something interesting. And just look at how Deb Crothers uses crab claws embedded in clay in her amazing statement necklaces. I often use rocks as bases for my dragon sculptures. This rock isn't even attached, but it gives a context for my steampunk dragon. This is a quartz crystal I happened upon. It grounds the dragon. It gives him something to do. This guy is sculpted on a mound of polymer clay, but he could have just as easily been done on a rock. In fact, I included some iron pyrite rocks and some stone chips, so rocks of all sizes will work too. If you love my videos and creative, out-of-the-box thinking, consider becoming a patron. My patrons, these awesome people, not only get a bonus tutorial from me every month, but I share sneak peeks and behind-the-scenes looks into my creative process. Join in the fun at patreon.com slash sandysewin. And back to your video. Something that might often get thrown away but can be really gorgeous in artwork is dried paint. Several years ago, I came up with the idea of using PBO paints that had dried and then peeled off a nonstick mat. I put them behind glass cabochons for a really beautiful opal-looking design. I've since realized that lots of other people have come up with this idea, and they call them paint skins. While PBO paints have this really cool honeycomb texture, you could use any paints. So before you throw out that old dried-up paint on your palette, Take another look and see if it might actually be something gorgeous to use in your art. By the way, I wanted to mention that many of these projects I'm showing you have accompanying tutorials. And if you want any information on any of them, check the list of links in the description below. This one is a whole sub-genre of things to use in art. Consider incorporating 
broken things. I absolutely loved this piece of pottery that I picked up at the airport on my last trip to visit my father. And I was pretty broken hearted when I knocked it over and smashed it. So instead of throwing it out, I started creating a piece of art that made me think of my father in New Mexico and the desert out west. Someday I'll finish this one. I'm not saying to keep everything you ever break, but if it has a special meaning to you, you might be able to find a way to turn it into something you can still treasure and enjoy. One person who does a great job of turning trash into treasure is Stephanie Kilgast. Be sure to check out the link to her work for more inspiration. Speaking of broken things, have you considered using light bulbs? And they don't necessarily have to be broken. Mostly I use them as forms because of their shape. These have been embedded in some junk polymer clay so they will stand up and you can use them to create beautiful domed beads. There's absolutely no problem with putting these in a 275 Fahrenheit oven. But if you have any doubts, do a test by wrapping a, the bulb in foil and baking for 20 to 30 minutes. So you can put two of the same size of these together and end up with a hollow lentil bead. Now sure, there's the Sculpey hollow bead maker, but you're limited with the depth you can make. Think about all of the sizes and shapes of light bulbs that are out there that you could use as forms. Now, I haven't played with this idea much, but this broken light bulb gave me the idea of using the actual glass in my sculpture. My thought is to break this and then embed pieces, maybe creating rounded windows or ports for looking into something. If you're going to break something like this, be sure to wrap it in a towel while you're breaking it, wear cut resistant gloves while handling, and of course cover all the sharp edges in the final design. I've saved my favorite for last. I absolutely adore going into a store like Home Depot or Harbor Freight and wandering around, seeing what there is to see. You can find not only pieces to use in your art, but also tools. These bolts make a terrific texture on a sheet of polymer clay. Isn't that awesome? These washers were textured and shaped and now are a beautiful bracelet. No one would guess that it came from the hardware store. These pendants are made with a combination of sheet metal, washers, coins, and jewelry findings. Even this small screw from the hardware store can give you a texture with the threads or an embossed pattern. I think it's kind of fun to walk up to the register with this bizarre assortment of things. The guys just look at me like I'm out of my mind. Now that you have these eight ideas, let me know in the comments which ones you're going to try in your next project. For even more inspiration, check out this mixed media playlist I put together for you.